Hi, today I wanted to introduce the TS-H1290FX. It's a 12 bay all flash NAS, so it's a desktop uh, slash tower chassis. Um, so it's very quiet to sit on the desk. Um, this is very similar to the TS-H2490FU that we launched a while ago with the, the rack mount version. Uh, this one has half the number of bays, but those bays are twice as fast compared to before. Uh, so you should be able to still get um, the same throughput through this unit. Um, so this one can use either 12 uh, U.2 NVMe drives up front um, or you can use um, 6 gig SATA instead um, if you don't need the, the speed of the NVMe's you've got the option to use SATA drives as well. Now at the heart of this unit is the AMD EPIC CPU. Um, so the best thing about this CPU is that it's got 128 PCIe Gen 4 lanes which means we're able to give um, a full Gen 4 by 4 um, uh, lump of bandwidth to each of the 12 drive bays um, to get you the most performance off those U.2 NVMEs. Um, we do sell it in a couple of options so you can have 8 cores 16 threads or 16 cores 32 threads. The unit I've got here is the uh, the 8 core 16 thread version with 64 gig of RAM. Um, the maximum RAM is a full terabyte so with the 8 RAM slots uh, you can go all the way up to a full terabyte if you wish to upgrade that um, yourself later no problem. Um, here's a picture of the front of the unit so you can see the main 12 drive bays. Uh, so drive bay 1 is at the bottom left, drive bay 12 is at the top right. There's a small picture at the top of the unit that uh, illustrates this so that you can see which drive bay is which. Um, and the, uh, the drive trays themselves are lockable if you need that feature. Um, so each of the drive trays has its own uh, status activity light so if there's ever a problem with one of the drives you'll be able to see the red light or orange lights um, directly on the drive tray of the drive that's affected as well as in the interface. The interface will let you know which drive as well. Um, you can set up different alerting for that as well. Um, when we go around to the back of the unit you can see we've uh, managed to still fit in four PCI Express slots in the back and they're all very fast so you've got the uh, Gen 4 uh, uh, slots in the back. Uh, most of them are by 16 but some of them are by 8. Um, so you've also got two 2.5 gig LAN ports that's multi-speed so it works at 1 gig and 100 meg as well um, as well as the two 25 gig ports over there on the right. Um, so they're an SFP28 connector um, but if you use SFP plus uh, transceivers or DACs um, you're able to still run those at 10 gig if that's what your infrastructure currently has. Uh, we do have 25 gig, uh, gig switches as well so if you do need something like that we've got a 16 port 25 gig switch available in the range as well. Um, those two very large fans in the back enable us to spin them very slowly to get good airflow movement and they're situated um, directly uh, behind the CPU to try and get the uh, the cooling done over the CPU so it's nice and uh, nice and efficient to get the, the heat out without making any noise. Um, the unit right now is less than 20 centimeters away from my computer where my microphone is um, and it's very very quiet. Um, here's the internal view so you can see we've got the two fans in there so situated at the back so they're right behind where the uh, the RAM and the CPU is and there's an extra fan inside to direct uh, straight across the uh, the heatsink for the CPU just to get that heat out as efficiently as possible. Uh, you've got your four PCIe Gen 4 slots over there on the left as well um, and you've got the eight RAM slots for either side of the CPU. Um, very easy to install drives in the drive tray. Um, so for mine, I didn't actually use any screws. Um, you can just pop them in um, as an angle and then click down the other side. Um, but the unit does come with some extra screws in the box um, to secure them in place um, if you need to do that as well. Um, so as I said earlier, you can use up to a full one terabyte of ECC memory. We support RDIMMs in this unit, um, so you can get a lot of memory for a lot of different um, use cases here if you need the extra RAM in there. Um, you've got the different ordering info down there, so we've got uh, the units with 64, 128 and 256. Uh, the 64 comes with the, uh, the 8 core 16 thread CPU, uh, whereas the 128 gig and 256 gig um, do come with the, uh, uh, the 16 core 32 thread. Uh, version of that CPU. Um, so the uh, the PCIe slots in the back we can support NVIDIA graphics cards and we've got some different power connection options so we've got the 8 pin or the 6 pin options uh, so you're able to combine the, uh, the the smaller 2 pin with the 6 pin to get the 8 pin connector so if you do have a very demanding uh, GPU that needs some external power adding in there the power supply does have a spare cable inside the NAS for you to link into that if you need to as well. 
And we've got diff uh, different ways to configure the uh, the connection. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got the 25 gig switch. We also do a lot of 10 gig switch options as well. Um, so depending on what type of connection you need, whether it's SFP plus, um, even one gig SFP, um, or the uh, the native um, SFP28 for the 25 gig, uh, we've got a switch for, for most different options there. Uh, here's some different options that you can use in the PCIe slots um, in the back of the NAS. Um, so we start all the way down at the uh, smaller end with more 2.5 gig ports at the bottom right. Uh, some 5 gig, 10 gig options. Um, if you need some more 25 gig uh, ports, we can uh, we can add those. Uh, when I show you the performance testing soon, we actually tested it with six 25 gig ports. So we added a couple of extra uh, cards in there to bring us up to the six ports for that test. Um, or the star of the show in the bottom middle there is the uh, the 100 gig NIC that we've got, uh, which is used the QSFP28 connectors. And you can break those out into a few different options. You can either break it out into four 25 gig connections or eight 10 gig connections to link into a switch um, if you don't have the 100 gig switching you can break out that 100 gig port um, into multiple different connectors if you need to uh, so here's some performance testing with the uh, 128 gig version uh, with the 16 core 32 thread CPU so if you need to see more information on that you can pause it this information is also available on the website uh, and then I'll move on uh, to the 64 gig version here. So here's the 64 gig with the eight core uh, 16 thread CPU. Again, you can pause it if you need to see a bit more information. And both of these tests were done um, in the same environment with uh, six uh, 25 gig connections connected at the same time. Uh, so now we'll move into a, a bit of a live demo so you can see the unit being set up from scratch. Um, so here is the, the default wizard. So this unit, as with all of our other uh, QUTS hero based units, uh, you can switch the OS to QTS if you wish. Um, so if you need to use uh, our QTS operating system, which has a few different functions, um, you can switch that. Um, I'm going to carry on here with uh, QUTS hero um, version 5 that we've got on this one. This is what the unit ships with as standard. Uh, so I'm going to start the smart installation. Uh, you can do a check for update to see if there's any new firmware updates. I'm already on the latest, so I'll keep with the current firmware version. Click next. Now I want a NAS name, so I'll just go uh, with the name of the NAS itself. So TS-H1290FX. Got to pick a username now. You can't just use admin anymore. Um, need to type in a password, so I'll type in a password. There we go. Click next. Not save the password. So here it's asking uh, for the NTP time server. So I'll leave it on the one that's there as default. I'm happy with that. Uh, here's where you can set an IP address. So if you want to, you can go in here and uh, set a different IP. So I'll type in a different IP for my particular setup. Uh, so if I do 10, 10, 0, 1, and I don't need the secondary. Um, so that's the uh, the options I've got set up here. So Ethernet 1 and 2 would be the 25 gig. I've just got it currently connected into a 1 gig switch with uh, port 3, which is the first of the uh, 2.5 gig ports. Um, so I'm just going to set it on uh, that IP address there. Click Next. Just to confirm everything that you set up is uh, what you want. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to click Apply. It's going to initialize the NAS, clear everything off all the drives. I'm happy with that. So we'll click Initialize. Um, so I'll just go quiet here. Um, we'll speed this little bit up in editing and I'll come back as soon as it's finished and we're ready to uh, go through the next steps of the setup. But this shouldn't take long at all. Okay, so just a couple of minutes later and it's uh, finished doing the setup wizard and now it wants us to go to the NAS management screen. Uh, one thing that will happen when I go to NAS management, because I changed to a static IP address uh, during the setup, um, the, the hyperlink at the bottom left is showing that this is going to go to the new IP address when I click this. So we're no longer going to be on the 10.10.0.2.5.1. Uh, it's going to bounce us off to the 10.10.20.20 address that I set. Um, so if I do that, I get the login screen. Uh, so here I just log in with the username and password that I created uh, during the uh, setup wizard um, because you can no longer use the uh, the defaults of uh, admin and uh, anything that we've got set there. So I'll click login. I'm not going to save the password. Um, so here's just some data and privacy stuff to read through and continue with. Uh, 
um, and then we'll be met with the uh, home screen for the first time and we get a few pop-ups to start with so here we just get some information about there's your control panel and um, this is where you, your app center is this is where you'd access your user account and it's going to automatically bring up um, the storage and snapshots manager that's where you're going to go through and set up anything uh, to do with the storage pools which we'll do straight away um, here's some data collection and stuff if you want to agree to it i'll say no um, so here in the uh, first screen i'm going to go to on the left hand menu is the storage slash snapshot section uh, when i go to storage slash snapshots it's going to allow me to create a storage pool which will in turn create my first default share um, so the only option I've got in here is to do a new storage pool, so I'm going to select that. little information about what a storage pool is. Click Next. I'm going to select all the disks in this one. That is all the disks. I've only got the four disks inserted in this one. Um, so there's some uh, WD um, SN640s, I believe, um, the 1.46 terabyte options. Um, I'm going to change it from RAID 5 to RAID 10, a bit more performance. Um, so I'm just going to be happy with all that. Click Next. And now we've got a few boxes that are ticked here. Um, so optimize performance, I'm going to leave that ticked. So it'll go through and optimize the performance. Uh, it uses 100 gigs of free pool space to do that. So as it's a new storage pool being set up, usually there's no problem uh, having the 100 gig of free space for that. Uh, pool over provisioning, uh, sometimes a good idea so that, you know, depending on your SSD, sometimes it's good to have that. Um, the pool guaranteed snapshot space, um, you can have that enabled to use up some space. I don't need that to be so high. I'll maybe put it down to 10%. Um, and for me, I'm going to turn off the threshold on the pool. I prefer to have it on my volume, so I'll turn it off on the pool and I'll create it later on the volumes themselves. I'm going to click next. Am I happy with all the settings? I'm very happy with that. So then I can just click create. This is just warning you that it's going to take a little while to optimize the pool, but I'm okay with that. I'm gonna click okay. Uh, so the first thing it will do is do that optimization. So it'll run through, um, gonna wait till it gets to 100%, then it'll create some default shares for you. Um, as this does take a couple of minutes, um, I'll go quiet again and we'll skip through this bit for you. Um, but we're not skipping any steps here. We're just uh, moving through the, uh, through the setup bits, the bits you've got to wait so that this doesn't turn into a very long video. Um, so we can see that that says optimizing uh, when it comes back and I've got some uh, default share created there. It should create a public share by default. Um, I'll come back and talk you through some other options and show you some of the menus. Okay, and that's now a few minutes later. Um, it's uh, largely finished setting everything up. So we finished the optimizing performance. Um, it's still creating the storage pool and default shares, but I can see some of the pop-ups that have been coming there. Um, it's installed a couple of extra things like the uh, the advanced driver needed uh, for the 25 gig ethernet. Um, you can see everything's gone ready there. So it's all 100% ready to go. Now we can do anything that we want within the NAS. If I go look at the uh, the disks, we can see that the disks that I'm using are uh, Gen 3 by 4. Um, so the maximum speed of the slot is actually Gen 4 by 4. Um, so twice as fast. Uh, so obviously filling this up with 12 uh, 4 by 4 disks would be much, much faster on the performance. But it's going to let you know what's uh, detected. So it's detected here uh, that I've got the U.2 SSDs. Uh, but it's saying that these bays here are available for either SATA um, or NVMe uh, to be plugged in. Um, so if I close out of that, we can have a look at the uh, different pop-ups that have come here. You can see the full list in the notice board. Um, so the first one is a get started section, um, creating storage space, signing in for QNAP ID, setting security policies. I'll close that for now. Um, you get some other things here for the help center, letting you know that that's there. It's fine. Um, it's added the uh, malware remover shortcut to the desktop, so it automatically installs the malware remover for you. Um, we've also got a suggestion here to enable two-step verification, which is definitely a good idea. I'll close that for now. Um, you can do multimedia playback and thumbnail generation if you need it. Um, it says there's an update available in the App Center, so I can't clear that. That's an outstanding thing that must be done. Um, and I've also got uh, the malware, malware remover has completed its first scan, uh, so I can close that one as well. So if I click the update is available in the App Center, we can see that the License Center has an upgrade. So I can just click Upgrade on that one. I did the Update All option at the top uh, rather than clicking the, uh, the one itself. Um, this usually only takes a couple of seconds. Um, but that's largely the NAS up and running, ready to go. Uh, to give you a summary of the NAS here, we can see here this is the 8-core uh, 16 thread uh, with 64 gig of RAM. 
Um, so you can see a basic bit of information about it there. Um, if you want more info, you can click into the uh, system status. You get a lot more information about how the uh, the RAM is provisioned. Uh, so in this particular one, it's got four 8 gig modules built into there. Um, so it's got the uh, the eight channel um, um, eight channels of RAM in there. So we've got that. And if I go to the hardware information screen, we can see a little bit more information. Sorry, I clicked off that. We can see a little bit more information, just some temperatures, how things are running. Um, I will say today is extremely hot. Um, it says it's about 26 degrees Celsius outside, and it honestly feels about 30 in this little office. Um, but you can see there the CPU fan speed and the system fan speed, all quite low RPMs. Um, it's very quiet. Again, the unit is about 15 to 20 centimeters away from my laptop microphone, um, and it's probably not picking it up. It's a very, very quiet NAS this one. Um, so if anybody has any questions on the uh, TS-H1290 uh, FX, uh, do let me know. Um, and I'll try to come back to you as quick as possible. Um, but this is the new 12 bay um, all flash uh, desktop slash tower NAS um, that we've got based on the uh, AMD um, Epic CPU. All right. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks.